Welcome, my fellow Geminis. Uh, this is going to be your September 2024 reading. Um, this is for Gemini Sun, my fellow Gemini Moons, uh, Gemini Rising. Many of you are intuitively guided. I thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, you may be here because you're in love with the Gemini. Um, good luck. <laughs> and I just say that because I am a Gemini. Um, anyways, platonically, romantically. Uh, but just know that if that's the case, that you're going to receive messages also. Um, I read through my spirit guides who connect to your spirit guides. So they know you're here. Um, and by the way, of course, Sam's out cutting the grass. I feel like every time I do your reading, Sam's cutting the grass. Hopefully you can't hear it. But man, it's loud here. So I'm just going to let that pass for a second. Okay. Um, anyways, what was I saying? Um, so, yeah. So I read through my spirit guides. So definitely feel comfortable asking your guides to give you signs of confirmation. You know, whether that be through a number, or a name, a color, a uh, a flower, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and then just be open. Just be open. Um, and just let it flow. You know, don't try, don't try to make anything fit that doesn't fit. But, you know, if it fits, then, you know, in my readings, I feel like what we're doing is I'm really giving you a roadmap. Um, really how to live your best life. And, um, you know, Mercury is in retrograde right now, but it is going direct in September. I'm doing the readings a little early. Oh, uh, that's what I was going to tell you. Um, because I read, you know, through our guides, I don't feel like, you know, even though this is September, it's like, I feel like whenever reading reaches you or you come upon it, I feel like that is the divine time. That is when you're meant to hear it. So, you know, I get, I get comments all the time, like, you know, oh my God, I watched a reading that like fit me perfectly, but it was from years ago. Um, but it, it was everything I needed at the time. Well, to me, that's divine timing. So, you know, remember that you have this whole spiritual team that's assigned you, archangels, angels, spirit guides. Your spirit guides are only getting bigger and bigger as, you know, those we love enter into heaven. <laughs> um, so anyways, this month we are doing things a little bit differently. Many of you already know this. You probably checked out other readings. Um, we are doing opposite signs this month. So normally I go in order. I started to birthday month and then I just go forward. But this month I really felt guided to do opposite readings. And Gemini, I have to say, you have been showing up in a lot of people's readings. A lot of people. You showed up in your opposite sign, which is Sagittarius. Um, I know you shine, You showed up in Scorpio. Um, and quite a few. I mean, I know there's other ones. I just can't recall. But I remember those two um, distinctively. So, showing up in your opposite sign reading is, I feel like, a good thing. Um, and let me tell you why I'm doing opposite readings. Um, I feel like it's because, like, well, let me give you an example. I'm a Virgo, and my opposite is a Pisces. I'm a Virgo sun, Gemini moon, uh, but my opposite is Pisces. And I feel like Pisces has all that emotional energy that sometimes Virgo can lack. So there's a lot I can learn from Pisces, and there, there is a lot I have learned, and vice versa. So... I feel like, it, it, you know, like I'm learning through doing this month's reading this way that there is a lot that we can really pick up from potentially watching your opposites reading. Some of you may have signs in Sagittarius um, and their reading is already done. So um, and this month I am bringing back the major arcanas and we're using these as like bullet points you know, to give us an idea what the reading is going to be about. Sometimes it's their own little message. So we're going to use these after we begin with Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. And I have to say, I've been guided to, um, to um, 
bring a message in the beginning of the reading, but also at the end of the reading. So we're going to play it by ear, see how it goes, but I'm certainly not going to say no to that. We're going to use the Gilded Trail to clarify or go deeper. Um, and by the way, I'm using the same decks that I use for Sagittarius. So for each opposite sign, I'm using the same decks uh, because I am looking for synchronicities. And then for the main spread, we're going to use the Psychic Tarot, which I have to tell you, um, it's not normally a deck I use for Sagittarius, but I did. That's what I was called to. But it is a deck I love using for you. So we'll use the Psychic Tarot. But let's go ahead and officially open up the reading. And let's start with Mother Mary. Let's get her beautiful words of wisdom from my Geminis. Um, yeah, Mercury's in retrograde. But, you know, um, I believe Venus is, is moving in September into uh, the area of love for you. And, I mean, hello, I love Venus in love. So, we'll see. All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring the lid down a little bit. There we go. And let's begin. Some Mother Mary. Okay. Well, that didn't take any time at all. And you got a few. And I'm going to take them. Um, mm, you got four. We have Mother. I open my heart to my mother's humanness and her divinity. Mother. Some of you, um, you know, I've told my own story where, you know, my mother was someone who did have a hard time. She's a Leo and she had a hard time, um, at least with us kids, like really expressing her emotions, like saying, I love you. She didn't say I loved you. Um, and that's one of the stories with Sam and I, like when we were teenagers, he said that he loved me. And even though I loved him, I could not say it back. So he broke up with me. <laughs> he broke up. Now we're back together 40 years later. But yeah, he broke up with me. You have watched over one of my favorite um, messages. I allow myself to feel safe and enjoy my life, knowing that heaven is watching over my loved ones and me. And boy, is that true. Some of you, you could certainly have a mother who, or a mother figure who, um, is really watching over you, is helping to guide you. We have prayer. Oh, you have, you have six cards. Um, we have prayer. Instead of worrying, I pray about this situation to bring about real solutions. Instead of worrying, I pray about this situation to bring about real solutions. And that's why my readings are long, because that's what I want to bring you is real solutions. Sobriety. My clear mind is easily able to focus and concentrate. And then last but not least is truth. Probably one of the most important cards here, truth. I am lovingly honest with myself and others. I am lovingly honest with myself and others. I don't know why I always repeat Mother Mary's messages. Okay, so we're going to slide these over here. Um, let's actually make room for them. Because that, they will definitely, um, will definitely have clarity of why. Mother Mary brought out those messages. All right, so let's go ahead and begin with the Gilded Tarot. Interesting. I just noticed you're on the bottom of the deck. Um, I do shuffle all my decks before I begin. And then I like to give them a shuffle or two with you here. You know, in my mind's eye, you're all here with me anyway. It's like we're all just sitting around having a discussion about life. Let's give them a cut. Not much to cut, but let's cut. All right. And let's open up the tarot portion.
I definitely feel some of you have a mother figure who watches over you. Um, uh, you know, I feel that very strongly. And my eye was drawn right back to that again. We have the world. So the world signifies that a new chapter is opening up. Um, to me, the world chapter is a very spiritual time in my life. And really, I feel like this is when I've really found my spirituality. So I, I never lose it. You know, once I've, or you can, you can say a certain vibration, but this is when you are comfortable with your, your spirituality. Um, you're comfortable with your spiritual team. You know that they're guiding you. And um, I feel like that alone means that this new chapter is opening up for you. Okay, new chapter. We have the strength card. You know, first thing I want to do is kind of tie this back to sobriety. Um, and the reason why is this: the strength card really talks about our own inner demons. And learning how to tame them, right? Like taming ourselves. Um, if we remember that we're light and shadow, masculine and feminine, then um, really when you do this reflection, what you find within yourself is a sense of power, a sense of courage. It is an eight. So it can talk about... Um, you know, something that you you have overcoming. I feel like you probably have already overcome it, overcame it. Um, otherwise, I don't feel like the world would have showed up yet. So, you know, it's like taming of the shrew. Doctor, heal thyself. Um, eight is also a number of new beginnings. Also a number of infinity, as above, so below. You can see, usually the infinity sign is right above their head, but she's wearing it like a headband, almost like a symbol of being proud. But I say that I tie, I can tie back to sobriety because you can talk about, you know, like things, substance, or I can't speak today, substance that I use to like get me through or what have you. Um, it's really the light part of ourselves looking at that shadow part, um, giving it a name, not being fearful of it anymore, you know, because sometimes we need that shadow side to come out, but it's the light recognizing that. All right. Let's put these aside. We have Hierophant. Hierophant. And then we have Temperance. Well, there's your opposite sign. Interesting. Temperance talks about divine time. But really, Temperance's first message is patience. Sometimes I feel like divine is having patience with us. You know, like, and, and it's interesting because the Hierophant's also an image has been coming up a lot in these readings for September. Um, this card of Taurus, by the way, card of Leo with the strength card. Um, though I'm not really reading them as people, um, I'm reading them more as energy. And I have to say, every time I see this card this month, I feel like it's a blessing. I feel like there's a blessing coming your way. You know, but I feel like temperance is like, but it needs to be in divine timing. It needs to be when Gemini is ready. And that may be what the world is talking about. That may be what the strength card is talking about, right? The the courage to look within and to find real clarity. You know, the Hierophant is about your belief system. You know, your faith, keeping hope alive, believing you know, we have prayer and believing those prayers are going to be answered. Of course, they can be answered differently than what we prayed for. But I feel like they'll only be better. So he's looking right over at temperance. And, you know, what I love about temperance here 
as you can clearly see what she's doing. She's like mixing the waters of the loving waters of the soulmates, probably bringing each of them to balance, right? Equal vibration. And that's important, especially if this relates to any type of love. You know, that both these soulmates be, you know, it doesn't have to mean they're exactly the same. Um, they're in exactly the same place, but it means that, you know, their vibration is very close to each other. And again, it looks like the Harvin is just waiting to give this blessing to you. And I feel like the strength card, it may be the only thing that may be holding it up. You know, again, that courage to look within. But again, I all you know, when I see the infinity sign, it reminds me that we're spiritual beings having human experiences. So the world does talk about our spirituality and really understanding that, right? Like there's nothing that I'm going to go through in this lifetime that I haven't already been through in another lifetime. There's nothing that I'm going to go through that I cannot overcome. And listen, I know that from experience, you know, I've had some very, very difficult life lessons. Um, so, you know, but the world card is that realization, you know, that alone gives me this sense of power. All right, let's go ahead and bring in the psychic tarot. Let me give it one more shuffle. See what temperance wants to bring in. See what the Hierophant wants to bless us with. You know, I feel like once we do go within and we find that, you know, we do have this power within, I feel like that that alone raises your vibration. And again, the infinity sign as above, so below. No beginning, no end. Hierophant's just like, I'm waiting. I'm just sitting here waiting. All right. I'm sure my deck is in the upright, and it is. Hmm. All right, we start with the tower. That could be a little bit why the strength card is here. You know, here it's called disruption. It does mean something's ended. Or, you know, the ground is definitely shaken, shooken, shaken. I can't, I can't talk today. You know, I don't know why I read the tower as sometimes it's someone who's like fallen from grace. And whether if it's us, then I can definitely see the evolution of you, like finding your way, like back up to your mountaintop. If it's someone else. It may be just naturally that someone is being or something is being eclipsed out of your life. We have movement, choices, and decisions. Movement, choices, and decisions. And then we have victory and success. So that kind of takes the power away from the tower. You know, again, something may have happened outside of our control within the tower energy. And, um, you know, maybe you have been praying for real clarity. But then this too that's following it, movement, choices and decisions. First of all, it sounds like it's putting the ball in your court. You know what I mean? Like you're going to decide if you're going to step upon this path. But I feel like if you're here looking for clarity, am I on the right path? Well, victory and success would say yes. You know what I love about, you know, in this image, it, it reminds me of the fool. Because normally you'll see the fool like standing on this cliff, ready to take a leap of faith. And this may be talking about you taking a leap of faith on yourself. So if that's the confirmation you're looking for, I feel like this is this is saying yes, yes. 
you are stepping onto the right path. But this is also the energy of where other people are appreciating you for, you know, the action steps that you've taken. You know, people looking up to you because of that, like proud of you. All right, let's keep going. It's almost like in, you know, movement choices and decisions, it is you who has to make that decision of whether there will be movement. But because victory follows that, not just victory, also success. I feel like it is you stepping, stepping onto that path. Oh, there's that mother figure. The Empress. You know, the Empress mirroring the tower. There's no way the tower still is affecting this Empress. And I say that because the Empress is of a higher vibrational energy. This is someone who has learned through her life's experiences. And it also makes sense being next to victory and success. Because if this is anything that you're doing in the world, let's say, where you're speaking of your own experiences, like other people saying, Gemini, how did you overcome? How did you overcome that power? And you're saying, well, let me tell you how. I didn't shut down my heart. I kept my heart loving, nurturing. But I have found power and courage through this journey. This is someone who's very creative. This is someone who is always receiving epiphanies. You know, and every time I say that, I want to correct myself because we're all receiving signs, epiphanies, ideas. But the Empress is someone who really trusts in that, like trusts her intuition without doubt. And then it's someone who will give birth to those ideas, right? Like she is going to make that movement. That tower, I literally feel like it has no more, it carries no more weight in your life. And then we have stand your ground. This is the seven of wands under that tower. You know, and it's interesting because I've been saying a lot this month, like, like sometimes we got to just think about, like, what are we standing our ground against? Is it worth it? You know what I mean? Am I trying to make something turn out the way I want it to turn out, but I'm not getting those results? So sometimes I feel like standing your ground, but I also have to know when enough is enough. You know, this person is like, I feel like claiming victory over the world. Some of you could have certainly been waiting for, let's just say, someone else's energy to change, and it doesn't. So you're like reclaiming yourself, reclaiming your own power. Good this spiritual strength. Number nine. You know, this speaks about the experiences that you've been through. It speaks about the things that you've overcome and really being proud of yourself because of that. You know, I feel like sometimes without certain towers in our life, we, we can't really become the person we are today. And if you're standing in the Empress's energy, you should definitely be proud of yourself. You know, it's like that's what your spiritual team is. They are proud of you. It is a nine. So it is about reflection, right? But it's about final reflection. And by the way, again, your spiritual team feels like they're helping to guide you onto this next path, onto this new journey. You know, you're not alone. You never have been. You may feel alone, but that's the humanness within us. All right, let's keep going.
the sun, beautiful. The sun under victory and success, also under the Hierophant. You know, what I love about the sun is, first of all, it feels like a brand new day. And it's a sense of comfort knowing that, you know, anything done in the dark will come to the light when the sun comes out. I feel like it's playful type energy. It's where I'm starting to like live again. You know, I feel like that tower maybe had shut you down for a while. And some of you, you know, listen, you may have prayed that whatever that tower has taken away, that it come back. But it feels like to me that it wasn't meant to come back. Because I feel like you are starting on this new journey. And I do feel like you must have been in some type of reflection over this tower. And you are like taking the power away from it. The sun under victory. Hello, Ace of Pentacles. So literally, this speaks about something that's coming into your physical world. Beautiful coming under the Empress. And the reason why is I feel the Ace of Pentacles is like a seed. And it's really up to us to nurture this seed. That's how we're going to determine if this seed is going to blossom. Blossom into success. Blossom into whatever it's going to be. And the Empress is definitely going to nurture that seed. And by the way, the sun right beside it, that's going to nurture it also. So not only does it feel like you're starting something new, and it doesn't have to mean all areas of your life are changing, but something's changing. Something's evolving. Let's put it that way. And then we have temptation. Temptation. Again, you can tie that back to the strength card and sobriety. Um, you know, maybe that was part of the tower. Maybe I had been tempted to certain type of energy. And it would be lower vibrational energy. But again, the Empress doesn't live in lower vibrational energy. It's like once I learn that, I've learned that. He's also a card of Capricorn, by the way. So we'll put that there. And... Just looking, you have four, besides these major arcanas, one, two, three, four major arcanas here also. So, this may be a month of many changes. Um, but again, they feel good. I, and you know what I feel like temptation is talking about right now? Like this Ace of Pentacles, prosperity begins, victory and success. Right, you have everything here that in the Hierophant wants to give you a blessing. Temperance, anytime temperance shows up, it's about divine timing, and that I can trust in. The Empress, you know, um, she's going to trust her intuition. So sometimes when we start on this new path, some lower vibrational energy may try to come back in. And we just got to know that. Catch it. The Empress would be like, no way. Not going to happen. Um, you know, and if this is talking about, let's say, sobriety for some of you. You know, this person has their finger on the key. And the key is connected to this light. So even in the darkest of times, there's still a key that unlocks the next chapter, a new door, and the light is right there. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Uh, okay, heartache and loss. Well, that kind of explains the tower. But, you know, it's on the bottom of the deck, so this is what wants to go. And the only other three we have on the table right now is the Empress. So again, we want to remember with her, the Empress's message is she's loving and nurturing. She's powerful and strong. 
So some of you could certainly have gone through some heartache. But it is nothing you can't overcome. Memory is the love below that. Okay. So it is making me feel like it's it's a, of an emotional nature. You know, but let's just say that, you know, like, let's say you're hanging out with someone who does have lower vibrational energy. You know, like, let's say that, you know, with sobriety here, I'm just using this as an example. Um, you know, I'm hanging out with someone who likes to drink a lot. And I know that if I drink a lot, I'm not going to succeed, right? It's going to hamper my success. So I needed to cut ties with that. And listen, maybe they cut ties with us. But the truth of the matter is, I feel like in the long run, they probably did you a favor. Though it doesn't feel like that when you're going through that. And sometimes the only thing that helps heal, well, I feel like there's a couple things that can help heal a broken heart. Um, and sometimes it's time, faith. But also, I feel like sometimes, like, allowing ourselves to get lost within our creative house, it may just be starting you on a whole new path. You know what I mean? Where you start doing something um Potentially, you already love to do, you know, I often feel like, like, you know, like I've always loved to paint. Um, but I had, I just haven't been doing it. All of a sudden I start painting again. And when you're like, you know, and I, and I say painting because, um, you know, anything artistic, because I feel like it takes your focus. And when you're focused on that, you can't really focus on this, on the three swords. So I definitely feel like it can help. All right. Let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. And let's start at the beginning. We have the High Priestess. This is your intuition. It's exactly what I ask you to trust in the beginning of the reading. And your guides want you to trust. You know, it's that first instinct. And then not overthinking it. You know, sometimes, like, we're given red flags. But as humans, many times we ignore those red flags. And then time passes, and we look back and be like, damn, I did have a red flag, and I did ignore it. But now I feel like this is about you really being able to trust within your intuition. You know... The intu your intuition is a gift. And when you think about Tarot alone, and you just think about the order of Tarot, what's the first thing is the Fool, right? And, and I kind of felt the Fool in Victory and Success, right? Be ready to start this new journey, ready to take a leap of faith. Well, the world would also signify that. And then the first mentor that the fool meets is a magician. And a magician is meant to teach the fool that you really possess everything you need to truly be successful on this next journey. You know, the wisdom of your experiences, but not the pain. And then the next mentor that the fool meets is the high priestess. And the high priestess teaches the fool, I am your GPS in this lifetime. You know, it reminds me of like the three wise men and following the North Star, right? They just instinctively knew. Maybe you're following your North Star. You know, it's interesting because it's also touching the tower, so I have a feeling... Some of you were like, well, if I look back, I kind of knew it was going to happen. Maybe I didn't want it to happen. Maybe I hoped it didn't happen. But nonetheless, it did. 
Maybe now as I look back, I realize, yes, the red flags were sent. We have the Queen of Pentacles. Can be a Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. But doesn't have to be any of that. I call this queen my psychic detective. And one of the reasons why is this queen, you know, first of all, she's really learned how to read energy. And um, this is the queen, like, if I had a contract or something, I would want her to read. Because she would read between those lines and pick out those hidden clauses that other people miss. She is holding that pentacle in her hand. And here is this pentacle. She's touch touching the strength card. Look at this. The hangman is in the awakened state. The hangman is in the awakened state. It's like a spiritual awakening. Coming over the hierophant, but also victory and success. It's like now you know what you know what you know. Someone may say, how do you know that? I don't know. I just know what I know. And I trust what I know now. I love that the sun is also um, below it. It's almost like your spiritual team was waiting for this spiritual awakening. And I feel like now, this means the blessings are going to come in. This means that divine timing where at first she asked for patience, it does now feel like divine timing, like the right time. We have the King of Swords. Interesting because um, Sagittarius got the King of Swords in the exact same place. Can be you. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, male or female. Um, and I say that because, you know, first of all, we have both men and women who watch our readings. Um, but also we are all masculine and feminine energy. Is it a person? Maybe. Let's keep going. We'll figure it out. Look at this. The Ten of Swords is coming under the tower and over standing your ground so this certainly can talk about a repeat pattern this definitely is the energy of sword after sword in my back this tells me that this three of swords didn't happen once probably happened multiple times and again i feel like i probably received the red flags and maybe you know temptation i kept getting tempted back i kept getting tempted back To me, this is 100% a repeat pattern. We have the Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups coming um, over movement choices and decisions and spiritual strength. This is when we're really trying to make a decision. And um, it can feel a little chaotic. You know, these are cups. So I feel like it is something that has to do with you, like your emotions. But again, doesn't have to be love. But it'd be something you would love, like, you know, whether it be a person or whether it be what you do in your life or both. And then look at this. We have the Empress again. Over the sun. The awakened ha hangman above him above her and the hierophant i feel like it's just saying that this pattern over here and i feel like that's why temptation is here i feel like you found that key you found that light here is that light you used that key to unlock this next chapter you're stepping onto that next chapter fully awakened now you know what does that mean well truth from mother mary right you're lovingly honest and truthful with yourself 
And if it's relating again back, which I do feel it is, back to the three swords, the ten of swords and the tower and temptation. You know, and I feel like the seven of cups where maybe I am trying to make a decision about something, but then the empress comes out over the sun. That's clarity. And the awakened hangman, that's spiritual clarity. So I feel like any confusion in, you know, the seven of cups, I feel like very quickly, if you trust your intuition, you know, very quickly, um, you, you will know. I do feel like you do need to be aware, though, that sometimes this lower vibrational energy, because it is a repeat pattern, and it can show again. But I feel like now you're in a different headspace. Now your spiritual wake, your spirituality is awoken. You know, yes, the Empress, she keeps her heart open. But she is nobody's fool anymore. And I do feel like the Empress has gone through a lot of experiences to get to this point. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if someone tries to make a repeat appearance. And I, of course, cannot tell you what to do. But, you know, I feel like it's showing us like, you know, can it be successful after maybe three attempts, maybe ten attempts? You know, I feel like the answer is no. But you have to trust your own intuition on that. I feel like you're ready for something new, something better. I feel like, again, the Hierophant wants to bring in this blessing. And I feel like Temperance is saying, you know... Once you, like, once you really start trusting in your intuition, you know, someone tries to make, make a repeat appearance this time, you're going to see that red flag. And I do feel like you're just going to shut them down. I hope you do. Because I feel like if I don't, what will happen? I feel like you'll just end back up in the Ten of Swords. You know, it's almost like saying to someone, I am not the same person I used to be. Well, almost off the table, look at this. Temperance right over the Ace of Pentacles now. So this Ace of Pentacles, you know, again, it talks about um, something coming into your physical world. It says prosperity begins. Some of you, you know, you're using your creative nature and... Um, you're creating abundance for yourself or you have the ability to. And sometimes it's using your own experiences. I feel like with temperance coming out again, especially over this Ace of Pentacles, this is divine timing. It is the right time. She's looking right over at the devil. This is the devil. She's looking right over like, I am the light. You are the dark. The dark cannot win, especially when the sun is out. You know, the Empress is carrying the energy of that sun. Clarity, illumination, not just for herself, himself, but for anything or anyone that approaches her or him. All right, let's go. Let's go right below also. We have the wheel. And then we have the five of swords. So this is where the toxicity lied. You know, I feel again, listen, I feel like for some of you, and I know sometimes people don't like when I say this, but to me, I feel with the wheel, which is destiny, 
and we remember that we're spiritual beings and we come here as souls to expand our souls through our life lessons. It's like earth is our classroom. We have to understand that sometimes, most of the time, you know, not just the good things lie upon this wheel, but also some difficult lessons. I feel like for you, for you, for some of you, this lower vibrational energy that may want to make another appearance, you know, I feel like that's your lesson. Like, I have to realize, like, you know, do I keep trying and trying and trying with someone or something, and but I keep getting the exact same results? That lesson may simply be the recognition of that. And the recognition that, you know, as I evolve my own vibration, then those of a lower vibration naturally the universe wants them to fade away. It's our humanness that tries to pull them back again. Sometimes we think we're so in love with someone. But then, I, you know, what I would say to that, just look back at your life and think about other relationships you've been in where you thought, oh, they were the one. And now, as you move beyond that relationship, you say to yourself, Man, I'm glad that ended. It does kind of feel like someone's got their hooks in you. Um, but in the same breath, I feel like there's so much, like, I feel like you are evolving so much that I just don't think, you know, even though the Five of Swords, it does talk about toxic energy. It is a five, so it is asking for change. But the seven of cups being above it makes me a little leery, like, hmm, you know, there's a chance they could do this again. You know, there's a chance you could go back to that again. But I feel like that's why the sun is here. Again, any red flags, I feel like, especially with, again, with the hangman in the awakened state, you're going to know it. So anyways, with the wheel, destiny, I feel like, you know, we can't just say good things lie upon that wheel. So do some difficult lessons. But listen, let's say this, this was even a karmic lesson. And the lesson was really just about not accepting it anymore, knowing that you deserve better, right? And once you have that realization, then it takes the sting away. Seven of Swords. Wow. Seven of Swords. Well, that's my little liar. That's my little thief in the night. But listen, the Seven of Swords is right over the sun. So I need to say again, what's ever done in the dark will come to the light. If you've been in this pattern, getting sword after sword, dagger after dagger in your back, heartache after heartache, you know, tower after tower, and then you try to evolve, and then they make a repeat appearance, it may simply say that maybe you haven't learned that lesson yet. But I feel like with the Seven of Swords over the sun, it's very clear. And the hangman mirroring it right now. The hangman in the awakened state. This is definitely lower vibrational energy. Period. You know, this is someone who would rather lie than tell the truth. Why? Because it's easier for them. I'm not going to tell you I'm wrong. That makes me feel weak. Well, that's because they're in lower vibrational energy. Where the Empress, if she was wrong about something, she would very easily say that. Like, oh, okay, I was wrong about that. Not here.
we have the King of Pentacles. Interesting, we have the Queen of Pentacles. Now we have the King of Pentacles. And we have the Six of Pentacles. You know, is this King of Pentacles someone? Is it, you know, I mean, Temptation is the card of Capricorn. Um, the Six of Pentacles is learning that fine art of give and take. Definitely is showing me with the Ten of Swords that you've given and given and given. But probably haven't received what you deserve to receive. But you have to know that. And I feel like, you know, there's a sense of real power when we say to this lower vibrational energy, you don't have a place in my life anymore. I want better. I want better. It takes away their power. You know, don't try to fix them. It's not your job. That's divine's job. That's their spiritual team's job. But yet, I often feel a person in the Seven of Swords, they're more than comfortable in their lower vibrational energy. It's what they enjoy. You know, like I want my cake and I want to eat it too. Well, go right ahead, but not in my life. King of Pentacles is someone who, when they look at life, they look at the big picture. So, it's this king who's sitting over this ace with tempers right about. You know, it's interesting because we have the King of Pentacles mirroring the King of Swords. So, I feel like I want to go right into both these kings and um, let's take a better look at them. Let's see what each one of them represents. Now, normally the King of Swords to me would represent someone who is truthful. And that's what Mother Mary brings out. Someone who does live within their integrity. But let's see. Look at this. We have the Five of Pentacles with the Knight of Wands again. Or not again, but the Knight of Wands. You know why I said again? Because in the Five of Pentacles, it is like a tower. It's something that happened outside of your control. It is mirroring the tower now. And then here is that Knight of Wands. So I kind of get a feeling like this King of Swords. And by the way, it doesn't even have to be an air sign. It may just simply, I could see this King also living in that Seven of Swords energy. So to me, this certainly does feel like someone who may try to make a repeat appearance. And ultimately, it is going to be up to you. But I feel like your energy is so much different now. All right. So I'm going to say nay to that king. Let's look down at the king of, so or the king of pentacles now. We have the Page of Pentacles, and look at this. We have the Knight of Cups. So I'm going to say yay to this king. So now let's talk about the positive qualities of this king. To me, the King of uh, Pentacles, you know, if, if they're in their higher vibrational energy, is someone who's very loyal. Loyalty means a lot. And I kind of want you to forget the sign. Because I already know some of you be like, well, I've been with the King of Pentacles. And loyalty is not what I would call them. And just think about this person's energy instead. I feel like this person could be a very good counterpart to you. Because I do feel like you are also this Queen of Pentacles. 
even though I know you're Gemini. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's just how I read. And it does kind of feel like what Temperance was waiting for, right? The right time. What's she doing? She's making sure both soulmates are equally filled. To me, that means that both are on a very similar vibration. Page of Pentacles may talk about a path of knowledge, but it also may be younger energy. Could be someone you already know. But if it is someone you already know, they're now showing as a king. So they themselves have evolved. And then this page is bringing out the Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment. Now, this king is coming over that Ace of Pentacles. Interesting. I feel like you got two people coming in. One who has been here, done that, hurt you probably over and over again. And you may even know who this king is, you know, because the Page of Pentacles is here. But I don't feel like this is someone who hurt you. I just don't feel that. So, and temperance right above this king. Divine timing. But because temperance is up here, and now temperance is right over the ace of cups. Or I'm sorry, the ace of pentacles. Which means something coming into your physical world. But again, I feel like there's potential to. One, I feel like there's no change would put me right back in that Ten of Swords, in that Three of Swords, would result right back into that tower again. And then I feel like there's this other king, or queen, who wants to bring love in. Unexpected. You know, you can't really plan love. You can certainly get yourself ready for it. You know, and what I mean by that is think of the law of attraction, right? When my vibration is of a higher vibration, then that's what the universe must meet. When my vibration is in a lower vibration, well, that's what the universe is going to meet. You know, some people say, like, why do I keep attracting this type of energy? Well, because that's, be you know... I feel like because I'm lowering my own vibration to meet theirs. And now I feel like over here, you're demanding that anyone who comes into your life meets your vibration now. Again, you are, you are in the awakened state. That doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to now see that. Well, I shouldn't say it because I feel like if there's a red flag, you're going to see it. But it doesn't guarantee that you'll deny it. That has to come from you. But with the Empress here twice, I feel like I feel I feel kind of safe about it. And it's interesting how I said sometimes just look back at your own life and like experiences that you've had, you know, with people like where you thought, oh, they were my everything. And then it ended. And then you look back and be like, oh, man, I'm glad that ended. Right. And, it, and sometimes it takes time to realize that. And when I see the seven of swords, I often think of like a narcissistic type energy. And these type of people, you know, right when our lives are starting to like evolve, they want to come back in. Why? It's like they don't want to make you happy. But like there's something within them where they also don't want to see you happy. Too bad. Because there is someone. There is someone who does. And this king now, to me, is representing loyalty. Truth. Someone who's grounded. Someone who's also holding this pentacle. So now the queen and the king are holding this pentacle. You know, and this seven of swords coming over the sun... It should give you a sense of comfort again. Like if someone is coming into your life and they are a lower vibrational energy, you know, they're liars or cheaters, you're going to know it. 
You know, the Empress trusts her intuition. And that's exactly what's here. Your intuition, in you know, over this next chapter. So, I can't say anything negative about this king. Or queen. Hmm. Okay, let's, um, you know, it's interesting. I always say, let's go back and clarify a few things, but really in a reading, I feel like it's very clear. I do it more for you. I don't know when the Six of uh, Pentacles came out, but I feel like I need to talk about it for a second because Six of Pentacles, and especially with it mirroring the wheel, one of the lessons could have been, um, you know, learning that fine art of give and take. I feel like the person in the Six of Pentacles, much like the Empress, is a very empathetic soul um, and, you know, can get stuck, like giving to the underdog, giving to someone... You know, there's nothing wrong with giving to the underdog or giving someone a hand up. But sometimes people keep their hands out and they 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 don't evolve. And we just have to learn that. Right? This is about, you know, am I a giver and I don't allow myself to receive? Feels like a life's lesson. One of your life's lessons. I almost don't want to get rid of this knight. So I feel like what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the knight right in the middle of the table. And I'm just going to follow that a little bit. Unexpected couple fulfillment. You know, and that, again, maybe with the Seven of Cups is, could be two people. We have the Page of Wands. Looking right back at that night. Well, my Page of Wands um, here is my little risk taker. We have Four of Wands. Look at this. This is the Marriage card. This is a commitment. And then we have the death card. Death card, card of Scorpio, first of all. Um, but it is about closing doors and allowing a new door to open. And a new door will always open. And I don't care what anybody says. I know I get people who tell me, argue with me all the time about that, but I know it. I know a new door will always open. And the world being your very first card is signifying that. And it's also signifying that this is a very spiritual time in your life. So it makes sense that the hangman is in the awakened state. Closing of one door. So that a new door can open. You know, the death card is mirroring the page of pentacles. And the page of pentacles really speaks about a path of knowledge what I've been learning in my life, the wisdom I've been gaining, and then follows that Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment, and then that Page of Wands who's looking right back at that Knight of Cups, like my risk taker. But it seems that it eventually will evolve into a true commitment. And maybe the death card is like, you know, again, if two people are coming in, you're putting an end, a real end to one of them. Like literally, you're closing that door, you're locking that door and you're throwing away the key. You know, and you know, real life, it may not be easy. But will it be worth it? It certainly looks like it's worth it.
you know, and the death card is also touching temperance and the ace of pentacles and the other empress. You know, it's interesting because all of a sudden what entered my mind again is the mother figure. Some of you could have lost a mother or, you know, someone who you would call like, you know, mothering energy. And they could be a big part of helping to guide new love into your life. You know, this Ten of Swords, this Three of Swords, this Tower, uh, sometimes it's, a, it's, you know, it's something we can't control. But we can control whether we say yes or no again. So I would not be surprised if some of you have this beautiful mother figure who is helping to guide like real love into your life. And, you know, I opened the reading, talk about temperance, like making sure both of the soulmates, both cups were equally filled. Well, the four of wands to me, I say this all the time, but I really mean it, is my favorite love card. Because it's about making a true commitment. And I do feel like it's a commitment that lasts for a lifetime. I also feel like whoever is coming in has also had a spiritual awakening. It doesn't mean I know everything. It just means I trust. I trust my spiritual team. I trust my intuition. I know so much more than I used to know. I'm so much stronger than I used to be. And I feel like, you know, if you really feel that way, you know, I, listen, I just feel like someone really good is coming in. But I also feel like someone bad may make a repeat appearance. Like, I, I don't want to see you in love with someone else. But I feel like you may be saying, but listen, I am not that same person. I am not the same person that you abused and you used and you broke my heart. And you kept putting these daggers in my back. And, you know, you know, the tower could talk about someone who, like, you know, you're you're talking to. And then all of a sudden, like, they ghost you. You know, no communication. And then as you start to mend, boom, they try to communicate again. You know, if you can look at it like maybe I was just meant to learn a lesson here. My soul wanted to learn this lesson so my soul could evolve. And I feel like that's why we're seeing the Empress so much also, because there is unexpected love coming your way. And I kind of love that the Page of Wands is facing it. To me, that means someone who is willing to take a chance. You know, and let's go the whole way back to the two. It doesn't mean like, you know, that I have to immediately know, is this going to be forever? But yet in the same breath, I feel like you're going to feel it. You know, what's funny is I think it was. Hmm. I'm not sure if it was Sagittarius is reading, but though Sagittarius is definitely being represented here. Um. But someone's reading is where I felt like, you know, they had an angel on one shoulder and a devil on another. That's kind of what I feel here. Which am I going to feed? Which am I going to feed? When I know better, I do better. When I evolve, those who do not evolve, naturally, naturally, Let's just say the universe wants them to fade away. The reason why they don't fade away sometimes is because we pull them back in. But I feel like if you are someone who is now in the Empress's energy, if you're someone who's, who has had this spiritual awareness, and let's not forget, I feel like the Hierophant is definitely giving you a blessing. But that Knight of Cups feels like a blessing. And I don't feel like this is just about love, guys. I also feel like this is, this is about life. It's about your creativity. It could be, you know, you changing course within your career. Using what you have learned to, you know, start you on a new path. 
And, you know, when you yourself have evolved again, who's ever in that Knight of Cups, then they themselves must have also evolved. Now, you may not know that, you may not know them, but you're going to feel it. Again, that sun, it's going to give you any red flags. And I do feel like one who belongs to all these swords and this heartache and this repeat appearance, that red flag will be very clear. But I feel the other. It does kind of feel like, you know, I feel like it is about like taking a chance. It's probably why we keep seeing the Empress do because again, she keeps our heart open. She doesn't allow people like this who, you know, had no problem lying to us, potentially cheating, stabbing us in the back, ghosting us. She's not going to shut her heart down because of that person. The more reason why you need to be aware, open. You know, what I love is this is the type of reading where a lot of times you would see like the Eight of Swords where someone does create this self-created prison to try to protect themselves. I don't see it anywhere here. I feel like really what this is saying as, because I feel like this is saying that you have evolved. And it is time for good things to happen. You know, you have a lot of energy of prosperity, but you also have beautiful love. I mean, the Knight of Cups and then the Four of Wands. Well, that's true love, true commitment. And it ties me right back to what Temperance was doing all along. We have the moon on the bottom of the card. So the moon, card of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. But it can talk about uncertainty. You know, I can only move as far as the moonlight will allow me or I can only see. Yet, I also feel it's very dreamy type energy. And do I feel like the Knight of Cups is dreamy energy? I do. And the Ace of Pentacles literally means that something is, it's coming into your physical world. But I don't feel like it's just one blessing. I feel like you are evolving and then so far is your life. Okay. Let's go ahead, even though we have a lot of messages from Mother Mary already, let's go ahead and see if any more want to come out. Any other words of wisdom? Especially now that we've done this whole reading. Tenderness. That's one of the um, traits that the Empress has. Tenderness. I am both gentle and powerful. I am both gentle and and powerful. It's like the evolution of Gemini. And, you know, I feel proud of you. I know what this means. Like, I have been tempted back to, not lately, but in my life, I have been tempted back to those who did not treat me well. And you wonder, like, why? You know, I, I hate to keep telling this story, but it keeps fitting within certain readings. Um, you know, many of you know Sam and I's story. Um, like, we reconnected after 40 years, and he reached out and called me one day. And the day that he called me, I was on the phone talking to someone I had just broken up with after 25 years. and. Although, you know, the Virgo in me is like, I really don't have a problem being alone. I was having this moment of weakness. And I picked up the phone and I called him and, and I invited him over. And we were just talking about that. And then my call waiting came in. And on the other phone or on the other line, it, it was Sam. But he opened it up by... um by words of a Bob Seger song that were that was Night Moves. That was our song back when we were teenagers. Remember how I opened the reading and I said I couldn't say I loved you, though I already felt it. So 
I, at that moment of weakness, right? Just like that, everything changed. And I told the person that I invited over, I said, never mind. I got to go. And Sam and I had talked on the phone for hours and hours and hours ever since then. Now we're in union. So you just never know. And I apologize to keep talking about that story, but that's what I feel like. You just never know. And sometimes it does happen in a moment of weakness, but divine stepped in. Boy, am I grateful. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Wow, what a reading. Um, your opposite sign certainly showed up and showed up a lot in your reading, and you showed up a lot in their reading. Um, and it doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean that you are attached to Sagittarius, but you may learn from their reading as they're probably going to learn from your reading. There are a lot of similarities. Um, I will say that. Um, but what a reading. You know, your readings never disappoint. That's for sure. Um, and I'm going to let that be. I, um, I can't wait to read your comments. I've been saying this a lot, but, you know, I just want you to understand that, you know, if let's say you've gone through this energy and you're coming out the other side, your words can certainly help those who are still thinking about this person of a repeat, of, you know, like the repeat offender. That's what I feel like. Like you've offended me over and over again. And why do I keep giving my power away to you? Mother Mary, Mother, watched over. Prayers, but prayers being answered. Sobriety, that seems to tie a lot down here. Like at that lower vibrational energy, they may have a tendency to keep you in that lower vibrational energy. But then truth, being lovingly honest with yourself and others. I don't have to yell at this person. I just got to say, sorry. Sorry. Goodbye. All right, guys. I love you. I thank you. Um. Can't wait to read your comments. I just can't. I can't wait to read your comments. And by the way, your comments help give me confirmation also. Um, and I and I thank you so much for you for you know the love that you send me. It just I tell you, it melts my heart. There are days, you know, it's funny, a real quick story. I was watching a movie the other night called One Life with Anthony Hopkins. Fantastic movie. Um, and it's a true story. I won't give it, give it away because some of you may want to watch it. Um, but when I was done watching that movie, I remember I said to God, I'm like, God, are you using me for all that I can be? Or is there, you know, is there anything you like, am I living up to my true potential through your eyes? And then something may be coming to the office and I still had my computer up and I read a comment about someone, uh, someone's comment to me. And um, let's just say her comment gave me confirmation that God is using me in the way that he that he wants to. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm not even sure why I'm talking about that. But anyway, um, I'm going to stop talking now. I love you guys. I will see you next time at our table. Bye bye.